Now that we have improper integrals, let's revisit the problems on moments and center of mass. So you may want to review this. This is going to be the rod of non-uniform density from calc 7.6.5. And what we're going to consider now is not going to be rods. We're going to consider probability theory. So instead of a rod of non-uniform density, which is just going to be a finite area cut off from the real line, we're going to consider probability distributions in the real line. So these can be infinite. We wouldn't talk about an infinite rod, but we would talk about infinite subsets of the real line. Okay, so we're still going to have a density function in this case, and for probability distributions, we're going to call this the probability density function. Okay, it'll be a positive function on our subset, say on the real line. And the key thing about this is, is that we find its mass, the mass is going to be equal to 1. So the mass being equal to 1 is pretty much what brings probability to the table. All right, so the problem we're interested in is how do we find a center of mass for one of these objects? Well, for probability theory, we don't talk about center of mass. Instead, we talk about the mean, denoted by mu. Same idea. It's just going to be a weighted average. All right, here's the idea. It wouldn't make sense to talk about infinite rods in the real world, okay? Physically, that doesn't exist. But we can talk about that in probability theory. So this notion of improper integral can be carried wholesale to there. So this is just going to be another application of an improper integral. So let's take a look. My example is going to be find the mean, center of mass, for the probability density function e to the minus x over the region from x equals 0 to x equal to plus infinity. Here's the picture for this. I draw on my graph. We have our density function. And we want to find its center of mass. So that would be, still has the same physical interpretation. I want to find the point where if I put my finger under this infinite rod, where does it balance at? Okay. So the first thing I need to do is to figure out what the mass is. If the mass is 1, smooth sailing, I don't need to fix anything. If it's not equal to 1, then I'd need to do more work. All right, so let's take a look. The mass is going to be the same as the probability for the whole entire space. It's going to be definite integral from 0 to infinity of our density function dx. So we're taking definite integral from 0 to infinity of e to the minus x dx. We write out our improper integral. Okay, limit as b goes to infinity, integral from 0 to b of e to the minus x dx. Take the antiderivative, I get minus e to the minus x from 0 to b. I'm going to evaluate at b and 0, take the difference. That's going to give me limit b goes to infinity of 1 minus e to the minus b. And e to the minus b is going to go off to 0 as we let b go out to infinity. So our mass is going to be equal to 1. So we don't need to do any adjustments to bring this to probability theory. It's already there. Now let's calculate the mean. So first, I'm going to calculate the moment at the origin and then divide by the mass. But if we notice, since the mass is equal to 1, the mean and the moment about the origin are going to be the same. So all I have to do is write out the formula for the moment about the origin. So we have definite integral from 0 to infinity of x times the density function dx. So we're going to take the integral of x e to the minus x. That's going to be an integration by parts. So we'll let u be equal to x, dv equal to e to the minus x, dx. Okay, I want the u to be equal to x because we want to drive the x's out of the problem. And so when I find du, we have just du equals dx, and that's going to do exactly what we want. dv will be equal to e to the minus x dx. Any derivative of that's going to be minus e to the minus x. And so when I do my integration by parts, what do we do? I go down the diagonal. So that's going to give me the minus x e to the minus x. And I subtract off what I get when I integrate going up the right column. Okay, so if I subtract the right column, that's just going to be e to the minus x dx. We take the antiderivative of that. That gives me minus e to the minus x. So that's that term there. Then I have to evaluate at b and 0, take the limit as b goes off to infinity. 
So when I do that, we're going to be left with the term 1 minus b e to the minus b minus e to the minus b. Okay, we just saw or noted e to the minus b is going to go to 0 as b goes off to infinity. So I'll only need to worry about this middle term here, which we'll get with Lehovitile's rule. Let's put that off for a second just so we can get to our answer. This is going to go to 0. So I'm going to be left with the limit as b goes off to infinity is 1. So my moment about the origin is 1, the same as the mean, so our mean is equal to 1. Or if you're thinking physically, this would be center of mass is equal to 1. So what does that mean? If I put my finger under 1 here, this thing is going to balance. All right, still have one little piece to show. The limit of b times e to the minus b goes to 0 as b goes off to infinity. So I can rewrite that as b over e to the b. If I try to take the limit of each piece, we're going to wind up with infinity over infinity, which is one of our indeterminate forms. So that means we can apply Lehovitile's rule, take the derivative of the top over the derivative of the bottom. That's going to give me 1 over e to the b. Derivative of e to the b is just itself. And now when I take the limit as b goes off to infinity, I get a 0. Lehovitile's rule says if you get a limit when you compute f prime over g prime, then that's going to be the same as your original limit. So this limit is in fact zero.